directed by David Pastor and Alex Pastor, Bird Box Barcelona, the spin-off to the 2018 film Bird Box, is finally released on Netflix. As the film releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview, explain the ending, discuss the hidden details, and talk about if the spin-off is worthy of your time or not. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order for those who haven't watched the film yet, as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the movie. And if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot of the film. The film takes place in Spain and begins with Sebastian and his daughter Anna skating across the ice in the dimly lit confines of a skating ring. Only a few survivors remained after the apocalyptic disaster struck Europe. The world had been taken over by an enigmatic force that was capable of controlling people through their depressive emotions and pushing them towards suicide. Sebastian tragically lost his wife as the suicide epidemic got underway. He sought safety inside the ring while concentrating on defending Anna. Later, he was attacked by a group of blind individuals who had broken the law and were trying to rob him of food and supplies. After they left, Sebastian and Anna stepped outside into the bright sunlight while wearing black eye masks. Sebastian came across a group of other survivors while traveling and said he wanted to join them. They had a hunch though that Sebastian might be a danger to their security. However, Sebastian misrepresented himself as a former construction engineer and claimed to know how to make a generator and produce light and heat inside the closed communities. Sebastian was able to gain acceptance into the group by playing on their trust, he connected with the group's physician Liliana who attended to Sebastian's wounds. He also came across a person who had blinded his own eyes among the survivors. Despite the fact that most of the people feared the evil force, this person revealed that some people were immune to its effects and could move freely throughout the city without using blindfolds. They are referred to as the seers, but the seers who sought to rule the world began to systematically target and murder those who were not immune to this threat. While Sebastian kept a low profile and was noticeably absent, indicating that he may have already lost his daughter to the nefarious being. She is now everything to him in a spectral sense and he wants to join her as soon as possible. The following morning, while everyone was still dozing off inside the bus, Sebastian saw an opportunity. He began the engine while locking the driver's compartment. He persisted in going despite Liliana's attempts to stop him. Sebastian drove outside after bursting from the closed door. However, his carelessness caused the bus to swerve forward, which led to a terrible accident. No one had their eyes covered when the impact occurred and everyone was hurt. Sebastian saw the ghost of his daughter again amid the commotion. He then forced the scared people to open their eyes and see the creature. As directed by Anna, Sebastian guided them to gradually open their eyes so they could be exposed to the blinding light coming from the unknown souls. Each of the individuals began committing suicide after seeing the entity or alien, which the movie never showed us throughout the two films. The others had no idea that Sebastian was a seer, that this being was a divine angel saving humanity by killing them. He had such profound hallucinations that he could even see the dying victims morphing into angelic light and ascending to heaven. However, the reason Sebastian was caught into this delusion and the reason behind Anna's evil directives remained unclear. When Barcelona fell into the hands of an unidentified unseen force nine months ago, people fled for their lives in a panic. Sebastian was one of them caught in the turmoil as his wife forewarned him of the potential peril that hung over their daughter Anna. Acting quickly, Sebastian went to pick up Anna from school but tragedy struck when his wife was killed in a terrible accident. In a church, Sebastian found safety while he met the pastor Esteban. Esteban was of the opinion that the object was an angel and that it was forbidden for anyone to look at it due to its divine nature. Esteban proposed that humanity be liberated from the limitations of life itself in order to stop further suffering. Sebastian ran away from that place and asked his daughter to look at the pendant of an angel seraph. Through Sebastian's eyes, we see visions of her. A seraph is a celestial or heavenly being that has its roots in ancient Judaism. Him. According to the tradition, Seraphim are ranked as the top angels in Christian angiology and the fifth of ten angels in Jewish angiology. The phrase was used to describe six winged creatures that fly around the throne of God while shouting holy 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 in religious texts. After giving this pendant to Sophia, Sebastian stopped seeing the light coming out of the dead bodies, suggesting it was probably one of the reasons that leads Sebastian to have the angelic visions. For him, Anna walks as one such seraph that keeps on preaching the creation 
completeness of the invisible beings. Despite his underlying worries for his daughter's safety in the face of the rising death toll, Sebastian was deeply affected by this idea. While keeping their identities hidden, Sebastian and Anna sought refuge in a remote area, doing everything they could to find happiness. Their tranquility though didn't last long. One day, the father and daughter were captured by a group of seers led by the pastor who had found them hiding. Sebastian did not become their target because he was a seer himself. Anna eventually committed suicide after the pastor clearly forced her to open her eyes. Heartbroken and haunted by Anna's ghost, Sebastian discovered that she appeared to be holding his hand. This apparition was another tool the entity used to manipulate Sebastian, who was unaware of this. The entity had taken control of Sebastian's mind and told him to kill people. He was certain that if he followed these instructions, he would be reunited with Anna and his wife after his death. Another group of survivors led by Rafa and his dogs was discovered by Sebastian. The group included Octavio, a delivery man with a background in physics, Roberto and Isabel, a married couple, Claire, a psychiatrist from England, and Sofia, a young German girl who had lost her mother while traveling with them to Barcelona. Rafa didn't stop Sebastian from joining their group, though he had his doubts about Sebastian's true character. Sebastian meanwhile discovered Sofia who reminded him of Anna among the group. Making use of his multilingual abilities, he spoke to Sofia in German to find out about her being apart from her mother. Sofia drew a picture of a castle and a cable car that led to it after mentioning hearing about a mountain castle that was thought to be the safest place from the entity. Isabel figured Sofia was talking about Monjuic castle and the group decided to travel to that place because they would find food and supplies and safety within the castle's forfeited walls, which would protect them from the creature. As they made their way towards Monjuic, they encountered the entity which now appeared as their deceased loved ones. Rafa died as a result of the distraction caused by the apparitions. As the rest of them took cover in a shadowy cave, Octavio revealed his theory that the thing was a quantum being existing without a fluctuating compound and able to read emotions in people, especially fear and grief. But while they are in the shelter, Anna's will influence causes Sebastian to keep a window open, killing Octavio in the process. This time Sebastian was unable to see the light coming out from Octavio's body because he was already starting to doubt his morality and his beliefs at that point. The only survivors were Roberto, Isabel, Claire, Sophia and Sebastian and they continued through the city toward Monjuic. Roberto and Isabel died as a result of the CS relentless pursuit of them. Sebastian however was able to direct Claire and Sophia to a secure area. In an effort to keep Sophia safe from harm's way, Claire begins to suspect Sebastian's true identity as one of the seers during this time. However, Sebastian finally drew a line when Anna kept nagging him from taking Sophia's blindfold off. When he realized that he was killing people, he also understood that his actions were wrong and that he was not actually doing them any good. He resisted Anna's influence because he believed she was an evil apparition that the entity had made. Insisting that he would look out for them, Sebastian persuaded Sophia and Claire that he had no malicious intentions anymore. The pastor and his followers attacked Sophia and Claire's hideout as they once more put their trust in Sebastian and Sebastian came across a threat and killed her while leading Sophia and Claire out of the building. They drove directly to Monjuic after fleeing in a vehicle, however Esteban and his supporters persuaded them obstinately. As soon as they got to the tower, Sebastian urged Claire to take Sophia and go while he stopped Esteban. Sebastian managed to stop Esteban from entering despite an aggressive altercation. In the meantime, Sophia was escorted to the control room by Claire as she ascended the dangerous steel. Claire went into the control room and found the cable cars were not running. She used a large bell to make vibrations in a final attempt to seek help but it inadvertently drew the entity to them. The cable cars and the environment started to quake as the entity approached them. By imitating the voices of their loved ones, the entity made a valiant effort to seduce Claire and Sophia to open their blindfolds. Nevertheless, Claire and Sophia were able to board a cable car and travel in safety to the castle on the mountain. Sebastian struck Esteban with an iron rod in the course of a bloody altercation, nevertheless he was hurt in the altercation itself. Both men died from their wounds, but Sebastian took comfort in the fact that he had successfully led Claire and Sophia to safety before he breathed his last. Sophia and her mother reconnected when Claire and Sophia arrived at the castle. While this was going on, Claire was brought to a lab for some blood work. Claire pressed the other scientist on the significance of the test. One of them explained that they had been looking for a chemical marker or epigenetic change to spot the signs of trauma and precisely pinpoint the emotions the entity was after. The objective was to create an antibody that would protect them against the entity. The epigenetic antibody was injected into rats in the movie's concluding scene and the cages of the animals were then placed in a containment area. A seer, who appeared to be one of the test subjects, was in bed during this process. The seer scrambled to get a look when a menacing growling noise erupted from the containment chamber. 
chances are the monster is a result of a biological warfare and it originated in an eastern European country. We are quite sure about the theory because by the end of the film as the military officials have captured one of the monsters probably by using motion or gravity sensors, probably some country in Europe created a virus that can manipulate and disturb a person mentally which triggers the suicide response. People who are already disturbed internally or blind can withstand its effect, leaving a paraplegic society behind as its after effect. There are certain odds to popular contents in this film like the warfare angle is probably inspired by the Brad Pitt starter film World War Z. In Fort Montjuic, the military people are creating a modulated antigen that can trigger psychological responses and that inadvertently can make a person immune from the effects. Physically, the monster can be a super effective person like the Rat King from The Last of Us and it spreads the effects exponentially to whoever watches its physical shape. One of the characters in the film theorized about a quantum being but I think that is not the case as no prior invasions were depicted in the universe. Also there are no specific reason for the invasion so chances are this theory is just a red herring to manipulate us from the main plot. And the demonic invasion theory does not seem to be appropriate for a sci-fi content. This film is a somewhat worthy successor of the 2018 film but the franchise should not however be overused by Netflix as viewers are already getting tired of seeing the same things over and over again. It is high time for Netflix to stay away from the tried and true formula and present something novel and a new Bird Box sequel won't do that. However, the cliffhanger in the movie's ending left the audience wondering what would happen to the rats in the cage. The final scene might pave the way for Bird Box universe to have a follow up in which the antibodies harmful effects will put humanity in even greater danger. My guess is one of the CS will enter the facility in disguise and free the monster but some of the CS will side with the normal people and help them with their lives just like Sebastian. Hey 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 thank you for watching this video do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Bird Box Barcelona on Netflix hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the time being we are signing off adios they take our fears and twist them and I'll be back.